All right, I'm back, and uh, so I did want to mention this slide right here. This is not going to be on the exam, so don't worry about it. But the, what we've been doing so far is assuming that you've got two objects that are either exploding or they're colliding and sticking together or they're coming and they're bouncing off of each other, but in one dimension. So the question is, well, what would you do if you had one object that's coming in like this and another object's coming in like this, and then they collide? So you see we're in two dimensions when we do that. So in a case like that, you need to have two sets of equations. So you have one set of equation for each dimension that you're talking about, and so we're, we would have two equations that we have to solve at the same time. So it's, it's uh, more complicated, but it's, it's doable. But that's how you would solve a, a collision in two dimensions. Okay, so now let's summarize what we've just been talking about here. Momentum, linear momentum, is given by the letter P. It's going to be equal to the mass of an object times its speed. Newton's second law, force equals ma, can be rewritten in terms of momentum so that you get this thing here. So a force changes the momentum of a system. And then we just got through saying that if there is no force, so F is equal to zero, then momentum is conserved. So whatever your initial momentum is, that's going to equal your final momentum. And then we did that for three uh, examples. So we did the example of where something blew apart. We did an example where something comes together and sticks. And then we did an example of where something comes together and then it bounces off. So all three of those were conservation of momentum problems. Now we want to talk about a situation in which the force is not equal to zero. So if we take this formula here and then we take the T over to the other side, then we get that force multiplied by time is equal to the change in momentum. This quantity right here, so F multiplied by T, is going to be called the impulse. So, that, so when you provide an impulse on an object, you are applying a force over a certain period of time on that object. Who cares? Okay, when you apply a force times a time to an object, it changes the momentum of the system. So notice this time, momentum is not conserved. So if F was equal to zero, momentum is conserved. So we can use this very simple uh, relationship here. But if momentum, uh, or if the force is not equal to zero, now, momentum is not going to be conserved. Momentum is going to change when you do that. So here is an example of how you would use this. So a force of 6 newtons acts on a 3 kilogram object for 10 seconds. What was the object's change in momentum? Well, here is the change in momentum, and it's equal to the force multiplied by the time. So we were given the force, we were given the time. So multiply those two things together. Six times 10 is equal to 60. So therefore that must have been the change in momentum. Now another way of saying that though is you notice that I said that it was 60 Newton seconds. And the reason why I did that was this was in newtons, this was in seconds, so the change in momentum was newton seconds. But we also could have said that this was 60 
uh, kilograms meters per second. So either of these two is perfectly okay on the exam. So e either way, it's the correct metric units for that problem. Now, did you notice that this particular problem did not use the three kilograms? So did you notice that M is not in this equation? So you did not use the three kilograms, but when you go to part B, it says what's its change in velocity? So momentum is mv. So we know what the momentum was. And so we know what the m is. So if we solve that, now we could find what was the change in the speed of the object. So I think that that is a fairly easy question that could be on the exam. Then you got this one. All right, so this one is uh, the one that we did where we calculated uh, what would be the force of a bat on a ball when a home run is hit. And then I had to go to the internet and I found all of these different uh, kinds of numbers and then we plugged it into the, the various formulas and then we solved it for the force of the bat on the ball. All right, that's not going to be on the exam, so that's just too complicated. But I did want to show you uh, how powerful this particular technique is. And so that's it. So we have now reviewed everything for the unit lecture exam, and so I wish you luck on it. So study hard, and I will see you at the exam. For the rest of you, I will see you uh, for the next unit where we're going to start off by talking about energy. So until then, bye-bye.